If you're going on holiday, chances are you'll be passing through one of these, a major international airport. With so much security around, you'd think that your belongings are perfectly safe. But as the hostlers are about to demonstrate, ingenious thieves can still separate you from your possessions. In fact, they can even make you give them your hard-earned valuables. Paul's inside the airport terminal. He wants to see if this con will fly in the airport pickup. This is the area right outside the baggage reclaim hall. It's here that taxi drivers wait to pick up arriving passengers. And that's exactly what Paul is doing. On his clipboard is the name of the passenger he's expecting to meet. The con is on. Hi there. Great. Let's, uh... Like any good driver, Paul insists on taking care of the luggage. No, we bring the trolley, because uh, I'm probably going to bring the car around. Yeah, it's probably the best way. Of course, this isn't Paul's day job. In fact, he's got no intention of giving this couple a lift. What he wants is the luggage. Today? Oh, good. How's the weather? No snow, no. What I'm going to do is save us a little time. I'm in the driver's car park. You can't go there because it's a security thing. If you wait there, I'll run your bags down. I'll be there in less than five minutes. Otherwise, I've got to take you to the other car park. It takes 15 minutes or so. Okay, so just straight ahead of these doors, the barrier, I'll see you there. Usually it takes about three or four minutes. Okay? Take care. It's like taking candy from a baby. Paul walks off with their bags and the Macs go outside to wait for a car that will never turn up. So how did Paul convince complete strangers to trust him with their bags? And how did he know the name? To find out, we need to go back 20 minutes. Shortly before the passengers landed, Paul took up position in a cafe next to the arrivals gate, waiting for the right opportunity to present itself. And at this busy airport, he didn't have to wait long. This guy is a real taxi driver, and he really was here to pick up some arriving passengers. He had no idea that he'd just been caught up in the hostler's scam. This was the key moment. Without arousing suspicion, Paul had to sneak a glimpse at the driver's clipboard, which gave him the vital piece of information he was looking for, the name of the arriving passenger. He copied the details onto his own pad. But that was only the first part of the scam. In order for Paul to pause as a driver, he needed the real driver to disappear. Enter Alex and Jess, who'd been watching the whole time. As they walk past Paul, they clock the name on his pad and assume the roles of the passengers. Hawkins, Hawkins, Hawkins. Oh, Hawkins. Hello. That's us. That's Hi, us. There. Hi there. Richard. Hi. Hey. Nice to meet you, Hello. Richard. Hi. Hi there. Sorry, we came out of a yeah, different exit. Line. Oh, did you? Yes. Oh. The real driver had no reason to question Alex and Jess. And as soon as his back was turned, Paul stepped into his place. Next, having moved the driver away from the arrivals gate, Alex and Jess had to ditch him for good. Sorry, can I be really annoyed? Can I slip to the loo really, really quick? Is that OK? Um, should we meet you by the paying machines? We... Do you know where that's the are? Yeah. Yeah, we, 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 we do this got, We do this, sort of like, twice a week. <laughs> Thank uh, but, yeah, you. we'll meet you down there, cos I'm just going to... We'll, we won't be... Two minutes. Okay. Thank Thanks. You. Job done. He'll be waiting for them for a very long time. At the gate, when the Macs saw their names on Paul's clipboard, they naturally assumed that he was the driver they booked. Hi there. Great. And that's why they had no problem handing over all their possessions. After waiting outside for 20 minutes, the Marks start to wonder what the hold-up is. 
plenty of time for Paul to catch his own ride in the car park, courtesy of Alex and Jess. Eventually, it dawns on the Marks they're never going to see their driver or their bags again. We had like the shirt and black tie and the black jacket and the long coat, so he looked, I mean, he looked really professional. And he was from Glasgow, so we just believed him. <laughs> it's not as if we checked his ID, checked, you know, kind of see some ID for you, like with a bag. See, the reason why we trusted him was because he was literally standing there with a piece of paper with your surname on it, so. In this scam, there's absolutely no reason for the marks or the driver to assume anything until it's too late. And with Paul standing there with a notice board saying the marks' names on it, they naturally assume that he's been sent by the taxi company. To avoid this type of scam, the driver can ask the passengers where they're going because obviously he knows the destination and they should too. And the passengers can check his ID. But the most important thing is to remember not to allow yourself to be separated from your belongings. Very often when we get off an aeroplane, we're thinking about our onward journey, perhaps we're tired, perhaps there's some jet lag, and sometimes our guard is down. So we're not as cautious as we would otherwise normally be. And that means that airports are good places for scammers. 